with WABC TV Channel 7. America and the world gather for a celebration. Coming to this country's golden shores, to New York Harbor, to honor one of liberty's proudest symbols, the Statue of Liberty. Live from New York Harbor, the celebration continues as ABC presents Liberty Weekend. This morning, President Reagan reviews the international fleet, then the parade of the world's greatest tall ships in Operation Sail 86. Now from Governor's Island, Peter Jennings. Good morning, there it is, New York Harbor, one of the world's greatest. And there the entrance to the Hudson River, so named for Henry Hudson, who sailed up this river first in 1609. And here this morning, from around the world, the ships of the International Naval Armada have come to pay tribute to the Statue of Liberty. And there she is, the USS Iowa, America's battleship carrying the President of the United States down between the ships of the International Naval Armada on this, the 4th of July. Good morning and welcome to a glorious and sunny day as they stand the rail on the ships from Jamaica, from Canada, from Britain, France, and West Germany. It won't be long before the ships of another age make their way up through this harbor to cross and salute the statue and the President of the United States and, of course, the President of France, Francois Mitterrand, who will also this morning make his way down this great river in the eastern United States to Governor's Island to pay tribute once again to the Statue of Liberty. This is Liberty Weekend, and on board with the President, ABC Sam Donaldson. Good morning, Sam. Good morning, Peter. We're on the deck of the Iowa, as you said, moving down the Hudson River. We're just passing the trade towers now. President Reagan came aboard about 25 or 30 minutes ago by helicopter from the Rockefeller estate where he's been staying. 1,500 men of the Iowa here uh, met him along the rail. It was quite a sight. And in a few moments, uh, we're going to see uh, these uh, great ships from 33, uh, 33 ships from 14 countries. Miss, Mrs. Reagan, of course, is with the president, as uh, are his uh, top officials, uh, the chief of staff, uh, Donald Reagan, Secretary Schultz and Weinberger, and uh, National Security Advisor Poindexter. Sam, I must confess that some of us were quite amazed last night. The president, who looks uh, as vigorous as always this morning, we thought he was freezing last night because it turns out to have been one of the coldest days of the year on this particular date in New York history. How is he this morning? Well, Peter, I, I think you said something about the president in the coal last night. This ship has a great deal of uh, electronics on it. Radars are going and everything which is interfering with the signal. But uh, it was cold for a lot of people out there. But, of course, President and Mrs. Reagan had blankets in their box, and uh, he seemed to have survived uh, very nicely. And there you stand beneath the 16-inch guns. You've already uh, had a number of 21-gun salutes. Are you going to fire one? Well, the ship has been firing from a five-inch gun, uh, a number of uh, one salute at the top, and then as the president has uh, gone down the river, other naval vessels have fired 21-gun salutes. Uh, there's one going off uh, right now. I don't know the name of it, but it's a United States Navy ship, and Mr. Reagan will probably come out uh, where you can see him better. There he is now with the first leader, and they're going to take the salute. Salutes from the sea and salutes from the air. It is going to be a glorious day, but it is also going to be a noisy day. As the aerobatic teams from the U.S. Navy and the Air Force come and do their stuff over Governor's Island, where the Coast Guard has made us so welcome throughout Liberty Weekend, the President and Mrs. Reagan now rounding the tip of Battery Park, the very edge of this 10-mile island, which has seen so much maritime history.
great 16-inch guns, and if Sam Donaldson didn't tell you because I couldn't hear, the decision was not to fire them in New York Harbor, lest they blow out all the windows in all the glass buildings around the edge of Battery Park in Battery Park City. In Battery Park City, Lynn Scher. Good morning, Lynn. Proud gathering? Uh, uh, yes, Peter. Uh, so are the helicopters, but we'll, uh, I think we can talk over the police helicopter. The crowds are gathering, and what you need to know is the view that we have from here that you are seeing is not just for the crowds who are here today. There are people who actually live here. Battery Park City, a new development at the end of Lower Manhattan, and people live here. This is what they could see every day. Incidentally, the Battleship Iowa, as it goes by, I'm sure you can see an escort of almost every kind of boat in this harbor. There are sailboats, there are power boats, uh, there are cruisers, and there was even a kayak that went by about five minutes ago. It seems as if everybody wants to travel with the president, with the battleship, be in its wake or help lead the way, and here comes a tugboat, as a matter of fact, just about every kind of craft that you normally see uh, in this part of the island. But as you know, we are not used to that battleship gray. Today, it has such a festive air about it. The crowds are beginning to arrive. Uh, the grandstands here, some people have paid for these tickets. Some of them have been given them because they're part of a corporate sponsor. And the stands are beginning to fill up. It took a little while, but uh, there's quite a bit of activity here right now. Here comes the tugboat. This is what we're a lot more used to seeing here in New York Harbor. Thank you, Lynn, and very much. And the circle much. line behind it. Peter? Thank you, Lynn. Lynn, by the way, standing on land where there was none before. Because Battery Park City, of which Lynn spoke this morning, is actually the result of landfill from the trade towers, the twin trade towers, which you'll see a lot of today. They are the two tallest twin towers in the world, and what a vantage point this morning. There's a great deal more to come. If the harbor looks crowded now, just wait. We'll be back. IBM would like to take a minute to show you what it's been doing for years, supporting the arts. to show that a company known for state-of-the-art technology can also be interested in the state of the arts. Last year, Dodge made a very dramatic announcement. In a very dramatic way. We announced that every truck we build, every full-size pickup, van, wagon, and ram charger, comes with our five-year or 50,000-mile protection plan. And back then, we challenged Ford and Chevy to match that coverage. But you know what? Ford and Chevy still fall short. Now, get up to 750 cash back on all new Dodge Ram Chargers and full-size Dodge pickups, vans, and wagons. An investment firm is only as impressive as it is responsive. It's a go. So when interest rates fell, we looked for new ways for our clients to make money and develop global opportunities like the First Australia Fund, a first of its kind and a way to take advantage of changing markets. While others may imitate it, we're busy surpassing it. If anyone can show you bold new thinking in the business of making money, let's close it. It's Prudential Page, rock solid, market wise. <laughs> ABC's presentation of Liberty Weekend is brought to you by The Prudential, offering a full range of insurance and other financial services. America's best back trucks at Dodge. We don't just talk tough, we prove it. Kraft, which brings you good food and good food ideas. And IBM. Good morning from New York Harbor, and we hope you have a glorious 4th of July. 
It is a glorious day here in New York. The sun has risen in the east and shines down now upon the almost placid waters of New York Harbor as the USS Iowa, one of this country's great battleships with a great history dating from the Second World War, built in the Brooklyn Navy Yard, carries the President of the United States out of the Hudson River and into the port itself beneath the shadow of the Statue of Liberty to pay tribute this Liberty weekend to the Statue of Liberty herself, to the 100th anniversary since France gave the lady to this country to honor the union between the two and to honor what this country stands for. That is why we are here today to honor the lady, but also to have a very good time on a very exciting day. There's going to be more activity in this harbor than probably at any time there has been before in terms of international activity. The International Armada of Navy ships of today presently being reviewed by the president and in part reviewed by the French president, Francois Mitterrand. And then out in this harbor before too very long, the ships of earlier days and the modern ships crossing as the old ships, the tall ships come up from the south and the battleships from around the world and the cruisers and the frigates and the oilers. We are looking now at Governor's Island, the home of the U.S. Coast Guard, the largest Coast Guard station in the world, the first European to set sight on this little piece of land it was probably Giovanni de Verrazzano back in 1524. And there, the platform and the stage for the opening ceremonies last night and the podium from which President Reagan and French President Mitterrand will this morning review the tall ships. We hope you will stay with us throughout the morning. We're going to be here for a number of hours, and we need help. Joining us this morning, a man who knows as much about America's maritime tradition as anybody, Revel Carr, the director of the Mystic Seaport in Connecticut on America's East Coast. Revel? Have you ever seen anything quite like this? I'm, I have not. It is quite a day, and I think uh, as we see the president receiving his salute from the French destroyer out there. It is just a preview of, of what's going to come. One of the nice things is the way the naval vessels are anchored all along the parade route, and they themselves will be honoring the tall ships. One of the things I think we have, have come to realize uh, over the last four or five days out of here is how vast this harbor is. With the Statue of Liberty at the very center, she goes out 750 miles of coastline. When all these ships came in, we thought it would be crowded. They got lost, didn't yes. they? It, um, I, it looks from one location, if you look across the harbor, as if it is wall-to-wall -wall boats, and yet an aerial view shows that there's quite a bit of room between them. Um, it's a dicey situation for anyone moving around, but if they found a good location, they'll have a fine day. And we promise you, those of you who live far from the sea, that before the day is over, Revel Carr will teach us all <laughs> about topsails and tagallons and foresails and yard arms and standing the yard and standing the rail. Revel Carr from the Mystic Seaport. If you live in the east coast of the United States where you visit, it is a great place to visit to see something of America's maritime tradition. People have begun to gather here or began to gather here from across the country and around the world some days ago. Last night and yesterday there began to build a real excitement here. And last night as the president relit the Statue of Liberty, there she stands at the very epicenter of New York Harbor with the Iowa there in the foreground. The excitement in this city, which is uh, occasionally known to be blasé, was really quite something to behold. Many of the sailors on these international ships have had shore leave here, and the stories are already becoming legion. The USS Iowa, commissioned here in the Brooklyn Navy Yard in 1943, and part of the flyover conducted by the French, the Thunderbirds from the U.S. Air Force, the Blue Angels from the Navy. of the Blue Angels and the Thunderbirds and the French are here with theirs and uh, the Harriers are here. Not only the Navy Harriers uh, from the U.S. Navy, but the Harriers, the vertical 
takeoff jets from the British aircraft carrier, the Ark Royal, which most recently saw action in the Falkland Islands. And there she is, as we said, the Iowa. As much as any modern ship here today, she has history. She carried President Roosevelt to the Tehran Conference with Winston Churchill. In 1944, she went to the Pacific. And at the time of the surrender to Japan, she was the flagship for the Japanese surrender ceremonies. The surrender ceremonies, as you know, actually took place on the Missouri. Well, there are thousands and thousands of boats and ships from which you could view the ceremonies today. I confess one of the people we envy is ABC Sander Van Oker, who was on the old and glorious presidential lot yacht, the Sequoia. Good morning, Sandy. Good morning, Peter. We are aboard the presidential yacht Sequoia, and we're trailing right behind the uh, battleship Iowa, which, as we all know by now, has President and Mrs. Reagan. We're coming down, we've just left the west bank of the uh, Hudson River, and we're getting onto the harbor, and we're coming down here, and we're being followed, I think, by a flotilla of uh, ships. The presidential yacht Sequoia has served eight presidents over 44 years. Uh, it started with Herbert Hoover in 1931. Actually, it was bought by the Commerce Department to intercept rum runners on the Mississippi. Eight presidents, though, used it uh, until Jimmy Carter came along and decided it was an extravagance and sold it for $276,000. But I tell you, aboard it today, one is reminded, looking at this teak and mahogany, of what J.P. Morgan said when someone asked him what his yacht cost, and he said, anybody who has to ask, has to ask what a yacht costs, can't afford one. Sandy, let me interrupt you for just a second, because there you see yet another of the aerial tributes being paid to the Statue of Liberty today. We believe it is the French who share the colors of red, white, and blue, and who have participated to such a degree from such earliest times in America's history from the Revolutionary War. Sandy, let us come back to you on the Sequoia for a second. You talked about how much the President, Jimmy Carter, sold it for. It's cost about $2 million to restore, hasn't it? Let us tell you a little something about the communications in New York Harbor today. We have about 75 cameras, I think, at last count, all around New York Harbor and up and down the Hudson River. Some of them are up there, some of them are down here. It isn't that they don't work, it's sometimes that the paths of communication to get them all back to our transmitting station in New York City to push out around the rest of the country is sometimes difficult. So when we lose communication in picture, I hope you'll forgive us. This is the largest and most complicated television broadcast, technically speaking, that ABC News has ever mounted. We'll come back and continue it as the President and Mrs. Reagan on board the Iowa come to the Statue of Liberty. We'll be back in a moment. All you've got to do is squeeze. Crackle mayonnaise is creamy, so creamy, and now it comes out so easy. Crackle mayonnaise on cheese, and your eggs are BLTs. Crackle so creamy, all you've got to do is squeeze. Now you can get the great taste of Kraft Real Mayonnaise in a handy, easy to use squeeze bottle. Crackle mayonnaise is squeeze. So creamy on a hoagie bologna. And don't forget the macaroni. Crackle mayonnaise is squeeze. It on anything you please. Crackle so creamy, all you've got to do is squeeze. When David's not around, nothing takes his place. But wearing his Van Usen sure helps. Peter said I could have anything I wanted. So I took his Van Usen shirt right off his back. I love my puppy, my goldfish, and my daddy's shirt. Van Usen, for a man to wear and a woman to borrow. Nuggets, they're new and here this year. So bring your good friends and your family too. Yeah. Wendy's got crispy chicken nuggets for you. Come on now. Crispy nuggets. Let's all celebrate and have a good time. Yeah. Come
Come celebrate new crispy chicken nuggets at Wendy's. Next week, America's youngsters, from pornography to heart disease, they are facing adult problems. We'll also look at drug abuse on the job and have our regular Friday feature, Person of the Week. Next week, watch ABC's World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Here we go. Right. Good morning and welcome back to New York Harbor. There's a portion of what you're going to see on this very exciting 4th of July, and we hope you're enjoying your day off. The tall ships, as they make their way from lower New York Bay up towards the Verrazano Narrows Bridge from Sandy Hook, where they spent last night in rather rough conditions. So rough, in fact, that some of the sea captains could not come for the opening ceremony. And there, from one of our helicopters, is a look at New York Harbor as she begins to fill up this morning. And there, in the center of the frame, passing yet another little flotilla, the USS Iowa, with President and Mrs. Reagan making their way here to Governor's Island. There, the USS John F. Kennedy, just going out of screen on your right, and the Cunard Liner, the Queen Elizabeth II, which has come here to pay tribute to we colonials. We saw a sign in the harbor yesterday. Some of you, if you were watching yesterday, may have heard us mention it. Welcoming we colonials back to Britain, saying all was forgiven that if we went home to Britain, we could have tea and crumpets. The USS John F. Kennedy, the largest ship taking part in the International Naval Review. She is, of course, the namesake of the 35th president, John F. Kennedy. And overhead, once again, part of the aerial tribute, which you will hear and we hope see throughout the day. The U.S. Navy, the Blue Angels, the Thunderbirds and the Air Force over the trade towers, which dwarf all the other buildings at the lower end of Manhattan. A beautiful day. The cold has gone. The rain has gone. There is hardly a cloud in the sky, just a mist of white. A beautiful day for the President and the Secretary of Defense, Caspar Weinberger, and John Lehman, the Secretary of the Navy. And all the folks have just come to have a plain good time and listen to the ships from the other nations <laughs> salute the president and the statue. We mentioned the USS John F. Kennedy, the largest ship taking part. She is there in one of the prime locations in the harbor, and there is her crew in white standing the rail, as they say. And on board, ABC's Rebecca Chase. Good morning, Rebecca. Good morning, Peter. <laughs> How are things there? As you may know, 23 Well, they're manning the rail here, and we have one of the best positions here for both this magnificent air and sea show. Um, it, it's quite a lot of fun to be with uh, thousands of sailors watching a, a, a parade of ships going by. They're as interested and knowledgeable as uh, you can imagine. Rebecca, give us a sense of how big the Kennedy is. I'm sorry, how what? Can you give us a sense of how big she is when you're actually standing on board? Peter, this is a floating city. It is one of the largest uh, conventionally powered uh, uh, ships. It has a five-acre flight deck. Normally, they're launching as many as uh, 95 aircrafts here, as 15 seconds apart. It is usually home for 5,000 sailors. Many of them are on leave today, but there's many uh, guests and VIPs, and they expect to feed as many as five to 10,000 people here. In fact, you can probably see the pictures of the barbecue and the tents and uh, everybody in uniform and the, everyone's ship shape. And there is an aerial view of you with the long side, giving us some sense of contrast. The Staten Island Ferry was that orange ferry underneath the great deck of the Kennedy, which is almost a quarter of an acre in size. You've heard the Kennedy mentioned, which looks very festive, as you say, Rebecca, but you've heard the Kennedy's name mentioned in the news a lot recently. She's been serving in the Mediterranean as part of the support fleet uh, on the Libyan coast and on the Lebanese coast. She's over a thousand feet long, and as Rebecca Chase said, she is a city with everything on board, her own bakery, her own movies, her own television studios, her own newspapers. And there the civilians beginning to crowd their way for a better look, not only at the statue, which we say unabashedly looks fantastic, 
and the same as she has always done. Those of you across the country who may have thought she was going to look different after her restoration are in for a surprise as you take many looks at her today because she is still that wonderful same bottle green. The USS Iowa now has moved across in front of the statue and it is heaving to very gently there and on board again Sam Donaldson. Sam, the president's going to leave fairly shortly, right? We wondered about the Kennedy Rebel car. Do you know the Kennedy well? Have you been on her? In the, the Kennedy, one of the remarkable things in getting a sense of scale for the Kennedy is that if you stood it on end, it's the size of the Empire State Building. So people who have a sense of how big that building is, is that's what's floating out here. And it's incredible to think of, a, as, as was said, a, a floating city, 5,000 people, and a, build, and a ship the size of the Empire State Building. You were uh, saying to us earlier, we, we've been blessing the fact that we've had such a lovely day because it was so darn cold here last night. But as the balloons rise in the first order of celebration, what kind of a sailing day is this? It doesn't look very good. It's not going to be a strong sailing day. There are two disadvantages, a very light breeze, and some of those vessels need some uh, air to move with. But the other thing is that the uh, wind is down the Hudson, and that is not going to suit well the uh, square rig ships. So they will set their square sails, probably coming back down the river. Over Manhattan and over Governor's Island, where the Delaware Indians and the Manahattas Indians used to paddle, the aerobatic teams of the Blue Angels and the Thunderbirds. I almost sense this morning that we are uh, seeing a fractional lull here in the excitement. There was so much excitement last night when the statue was rededicated, unveiled electronically, as many of you, we hope, saw by the president. And then her torch lit again. There was, there was a real high note of enthusiasm in this city. And again, we hope across the country, we're almost assured across the country. This morning, it's almost like people are rolling down to the shore gently to enjoy the fort. Many of those people have come down to Battery Park where once there were guns and now there were just people. Bill Blakemore, people showing up in large number there this morning? They are showing up, Peter. In fact, some of them have been here all night. When we came down early this morning, I saw some of them still uh, stretched out on their blankets under the trees. But the party, which started last night, uh, is certainly well underway here now. People are pointing out in the harbor in every direction. It's uh, the perfect harbor day here. Everywhere you look, something's happening. And, of course, this particular point at the very lower tip of Manhattan has some relevance today because it was here in 1855 that the first immigrants who were kept track of by the United States government landed right here on this very promenade. You can hear the crowd cheering. They're uh, looking for a party, any excuse to cheer. Uh, airplanes going over, blimps going over, boats going past, warships from the 16th century and the 20th. All of them are delighting the crowd here. I've been speaking with some of the folks who came through this morning some from Ohio. There was one man with a backpack who'd come in from uh, Germany, and he said, what's going on? We told him, and he decided he might stay the weekend. <laughs> Bill, thank you very much. And as the day goes on, because, of course, it's only 9.30 in the morning here on the east coast of the United States, we can guarantee you that the crowds, both of people on shore and in the harbor on their boats and ships, will continue to increase. The tall ships making their way up the harbor, the International Naval Armada in the harbor, itself. ABC's news coverage of Operation Sail will continue after this and a word from your local station. Show and tell time. Another teddy bear. My teddy's name is Teddy Ruxpin. He's tall.